All my expectations about this engine were wrong, all of them. Flying the Monster electronic fuel injected for the first time was a very humbling experience for me. Everything on an aircraft must have a reason. Ignore the status quo, imagine from scratch and build what you can justify with science. Fail five times to succeed once. This is how we innovate paramotors. And for you, understanding the science behind will make you a smarter pilot. Three years ago, I have seen the electronic fuel injected monster for the first time at the Coupe Car Expo in France. Now, my first impression was it's just too complex and complicated. As a paramotor designer, I have the philosophy that whatever is not necessary for flying shouldn't be there because it's just another point of failure. I was just concerned how would we troubleshoot customers somewhere in Brazil if something goes wrong. And I also didn't like the way it's built, that it's a little bit further from the back of the pilot, which is the wrong way to go. It just moves the center of gravity further backwards. My second impression wasn't any better. I asked the Viterati guys at the expo, so what's about this engine? And they started to talk about, you know, how it always tuned perfectly and it idles perfectly and you never need to touch the carburetor. I said, yeah, that's fine, but I learned how to tune my carburetor. It's not a problem for me. Just go on, go on. And I was like, yeah, and it always starts just by pushing the button. I said, yeah, I learned how to prime our engine. It always fires the first or second pull. Just go on, not a big deal for me. And then they said it always it adapts to altitude automatically. I said, yeah, that's fine, that's good. But most of the pilots, 95% of their flights are at the same altitude. And those two, three flights per year that you really climb up high, is it really so important that the engine is not running perfectly? probably not that relevant and they were kind of disappointed about my lack of enthusiasm for the engine so I asked them so so tell me the number what's the number I said what number what number I'm like yeah the number how much more fuel efficient it is and at that and those times they didn't say so um, I was disappointed and honestly I guessed it would probably be 10% because if it was better they would say then two years ago uh, Vittorazzi did an online introduction of, of the thing and, and the whole thing was honestly full of, full of trash talk like you know airspace, aluminium and high technology and whatever and they didn't really say anything specific. I was a little bit disappointed. My third impression was even worse. Early this year we were selected to be one of the paramotor manufacturers to receive the engine of the first batch. As said, I wasn't really excited about the engine and I felt the pressure of missing out. I felt like being forced into a corner of paying ridiculous amount of money for an engine I have never seen, I didn't really trust and I had doubts about. In the meantime, we were developing our Varimatic propeller, which provides huge efficiency gains for the fraction of the cost and without the added complexity. And on top of that, I had to travel to Italy for a three-day training and even pay for that. What a show is this? So finally, I attended this three-day training at the Pitarotti factory in Italy. And I have to admit, all my assumptions were wrong. All of them. What a humbling experience it was for me. So let's get straight to the point. First of all, the fuel efficiency gains are massive. My fuel consumption on a regular monster with my glider is 4.3 liters per hour. With this boy, it's 2.8, 2.9. That's a huge difference. That makes my flight on a 12 liter tank from 2.7 hours to 4.3. What a big difference. I was also wrong believing that the altitude adaptation is not important. I actually realized that how many times I fly at high altitude. Uh, last year, for example, at the Wingman Challenge, a large part of the whole adventure was at very high altitude and we were burning like 8 liters per hour at those altitudes. Uh, so also in Iceland, we fly over a glacier. It really matters. And also just the fact that it always idles perfectly. For example, when I'm descending into a canyon, it would be so great not to worry about the engine dying on me. As an adventure pilot and also as a paramotor manufacturer, I have concerns about having too many points of failure. But during this training, the Vitorazzi team pretty much succeeded to convince me that they thought of everything. So the system will work even when, when the cylinder head temperature sensor is broken. The system will even work when the exhaust gas temperature is broken. It will just increase the amount of fuel by 15% just to be sure that the engine runs 
uh, run safe. It will even work when it indicates flat battery. So the battery will be indicated flat at 12 volt, but the system needs eight volts. So in case of an emergency, you can continue flying until the battery voltage drops down to eight volts when the system stops working. Now note that in such case, the battery is dead. It's not possible to recharge anymore. But again, in case of an emergency, you can stay airborne until the very, very last voltage. Of course, if the pump or the fuel injector fails, the engine dies, but these are automotive components and they seem to work pretty reliably in cars. So I would, I would trust that. The whole computer and the system is built in a very robust way. When I ask them why they are using these old fashioned, old school computer components, they answer that this is how aviation works. You don't want the most modern and advanced technology. You want the most reliable and well-tested and proven technology. So actually the computer inside is pretty old. As a paramotor manufacturer, I had concerns. How will we troubleshoot a customer on the other side of the world? If it was a carbureted engine, it's very easy. I'll exchange a few messages or one phone call. I can diagnose the problem, send the customer a link to one of our engine maintenance videos and guide him how to fix it. And the, and the pilot would be able to fix it on his own. Now with this one, I had concerns that it would be possible. But actually the Vitorazzi team succeeded to convince me about the opposite. This control unit will give you all, all the error messages and, and self-diagnostics. There is also a self-test procedure that any pilot can do based on the manual. It's pretty simple and that will perfectly verify whether the fuel injection system works correctly or not. It's also possible to download the telemetry and send to Vitorazzi for diagnostics. And these control units, there are actually three of them. So in the, in the, the customer will receive one with limited access to some, to some settings. This is a dealer slash maintenance uh, control unit where with this control unit, I can access some more advanced settings. And of course, in the Vitorazzi, they have one master unit that they can change anything. But there is a smart system. So for example, if I come to a conclusion that I need to change some settings on the customer's unit, I will be able to send him a temporary code that for 60 seconds will open some advanced settings for the customer. So I can guide the customer to change those settings and it's only valid for 60 seconds. So he will not be able to screw up the software completely. So this seems like they thought about pretty much everything. And yes, if we finally diagnose what's eventually a problem is we are less likely to repair it, but it will be very easy to replace the broken component, either is the injector or the pump or one of the sensors or eventually the whole control unit. Assuming that the fuel injection system works properly, you can expect the whole engine to last longer. You are less likely to overheat the engine because you get all kinds of warnings in case that happens. I was told that you will even get a vibration warning if the cylinder head is too hot, that the fuel injection will limit the flow of fuel for a fraction of a second, causing the engine to shake. So it draws your attention to the control unit. You are less likely to have a crack on your exhaust because the engine is running smoother and it's perfectly tuned. Also, the whole engine will be cleaner with less carbon residues in the engine, in the decompression port or, uh, or the exhaust and, and uh, silencer, because carbureted engines, especially in the mid-range, run unnecessarily rich, causing those sediments. The whole engine will be cleaner. Also, the starter, you can expect it to last a lot longer because it's just perfectly carbureted every time. So it seems this will be a much better system if it works reliably. And will it? Well, you know, I kind of believe it will. Uh, I, I do have the trust. It took them five years to develop this engine and it's because it's all built from scratch. It's not an adaptation of a EFI from some kind of scooter or something. It's all tailor-made for this purpose. All the 
for unmapping and everything. They had a fully functional motor three years ago and it took them so long to put it on the market because they paid so much attention to testing and, and, and making sure that everything works fine. It's difficult to describe only through personal encounters with the people in the Vitorazzi team I could really feel their passion and devotion for this project. It's incredible how much effort and R&D and, and money they invested in his whole project. There was one particular moment in the meeting with the Vitorazzi team where Matteo Orazzi, the head of the company, said that if we fail, this port will most likely never see electronic fuel injection again. And this kind of summarizes the attitude and responsibility uh, they took in the whole process. Let me tell you how I will benefit from the electronic fuel injection. On my paramotor adventures, I will definitely benefit from the extended range and fuel efficiency. So being able to fly longer will allow me to explore the unknown territories in Iceland. For example, when we fly to the Lucky Craters, it's so far away that we only get maybe 20 person to play around. And I was always wondering what's behind those little mountains, what's behind the next mountain range. Hopefully next year I'll find out. I also love proximity flying and I will definitely benefit from the EFI. I love to fly in the canyons, like diving very deep into a narrow canyon, having a few meters clearance on each side. Literally waterfall sprinkling on your gliders and thousands of birds. I am also fascinated by flying close to the glaciers, but these are quite dangerous environments. And every time I was descending into a canyon or descending closer to the glacier, I was always worried about my idle, will my engine die? And I always kept a little bit of throttle uh, just to be sure. Now with the EFI, I can rely on it and I, and I and I'll be able to enjoy it a lot more and, and be more relaxed and be more present in the flight. And this is the field at my home where I usually fly from for all those flights where I just go for maybe 30, 40 minutes to have some fun. I will definitely benefit from the fact that it starts on one button press. I thought it would be not be important, but Vitorazzi claims that it, the EFI will redefine the way we fly. And I start to believe that. It's like riding my motorcycle. I don't need to understand that complex engine. I don't need to be expert mechanic. I just, I just, I just get on the bike, push the button and it starts every single time without even thinking about it. And I can have fun without really understanding the, the, the technology. And now finally the paramotors got to the same point. You take it out of the car, stretch your glider, push the button and go flying. Just like with your car or a motorcycle, you wouldn't even think that it wouldn't start. Now that's a pretty substantial change in our sport. My only concern that remains unanswered is the battery life. Set to last five and a half hours, the larger one for seven hours, which is great for most of the flying we would do here and even for some adventure flights, but it would not be enough for a multi-day paramotor unsupported adventure. I did Icarus Trophy and the Wingman Challenge. I'm afraid the EFI will not be my choice of engine for the Wingman Challenge next year, although it would be the perfect engine in every other aspect. This is my personal unit and it is definitely a keeper for me. If you would like to have yours, they will be available starting 2024 in limited quantity, so the best way to get it is to pre-order right now. In the future, I would like to make another video about the EFI because there is so much interesting information that Vitorazzi team provided to us during that training. All the technical details, the charts, maps and everything. So there's a lot to talk about it. I think this is definitely the future of the motors. Thank you very much and stay tuned. Ciao, ciao.